There are a lot of books out there on critical thinking, but they're not all created equally. Welcome to Starboy. Today we're counting down the top five books out there on skepticism. To be on this list, a book has to be on critical thinking or be skeptical of a topic. It also cannot be one of the major bestsellers, such as Carl Sagan's Demon Haunted World. While I cannot recommend Sagan's classic enough, this countdown is about lesser known gems. The first book on our list is Theodore Schick and Louis Vaughn's How to Think About Weird Things, Critical Thinking for a New Age. This book is a slim textbook and it teaches you the techniques of skeptical authors such as James Randi and Carl Sagan. It goes over these with examples in medicine, UFOs, and the like, and teaches how to apply them in everyday life. In my opinion, this is the best book on critical thinking ever written. With that said, however, the newest editions of it can be prohibitively expensive because it's written for a college class. The older editions, however, are still quite good. You can buy one of these and save yourself a boatload of money. If I had the power to convince you to buy one book on this list, then this would definitely be it. Another skeptical textbook which is highly recommended is Kenneth Fetter's Frauds, Myths, and Mysteries, Science and Pseudoscience and Archaeology. Like the last book we mentioned, this is a slim book intended for reading in college. It, however, is also very easy to get through and teaches a ton of lessons about skepticism and critical thinking. Its focus on pseudo-archaeology also makes it very interesting, and it covers a lot of topics that people bring up all the time, such as creationism and ancient aliens. This book can also be bought in older editions to save some money if needed. Now that we've covered these essential textbooks, I'd also like to recommend a few books on particular subjects. The first of these is Abominable Science, Origins of the Yeti, Nessie, and Other Famous Cryptids, by Daniel Loxton and Donald Prothero. One common belief that many people have today is beasts such as Bigfoot and the Loch Ness Monster roam the world around us. The authors of this book, one a professional skeptic and the other a professional paleontologist and geologist, sympathetically explore these common beliefs. This book is very educational without being demeaning, and you can tell the authors are really fascinated by these beasts that many people believe in. This book is also popular science par excellence. It's one of the most well-written books you'll ever read written for a popular audience about topics in science, and I can't recommend it enough. A slightly older skeptical classic that I recommend is Philip Kitcher's Abusing Science, The Case Against Creationism. Philip Kitcher is a leading philosopher of biology, and he does a great job explaining how evolution works and the main arguments that creationists make against it. This book is a very good read for skeptics who frequently encounter these arguments in their daily lives. Aside from being very readable, this classic also has the advantage of being older. If money is an issue for you, then you can always buy a copy used on Amazon for just a couple bucks. The final book I'll recommend today is Mick West's Escaping the Rabbit Hole, How to Debunk Conspiracies Using Facts, Logic, and Respect. This book, which is a recent addition to the Skeptics Library, focuses on how to debunk conspiracy theories such as chemtrails and 9-11 truth. Rather than making fun of people or calling anyone stupid, however, the author Mick West does a very good job of being incredibly respectful and focuses solely on how to change people's minds as opposed to making fun of them. Given how polarized everything is in our current political climate, Mick West's stance of being very respectful and nice is incredibly admirable. This is the type of book that can help you talk to relatives and friends without damaging your relationships with them. If you're a person who solely wants techniques to change people's minds and you don't care about the deeper logical structures or some of the nuances of the arguments, then this may be the best book on the list to choose. And that concludes this episode. If you enjoyed it and would like me to make another episode discussing popular skeptics books, then I'd be happy to. With that said, stay skeptical and thanks for listening.